I don't think we're going to make any more sticks in this thing. Peter Eisenman challenges the traditional premises of modernism, that form should follow function, site, and structure. Form for Eisenman follows theory, frequently theory about meaning and language and how to design in relationship to that theory. He questions the usual coordinates by which people orient themselves. But every project I have, I tell my clients this, that we are interested in causing risk, putting you at risk. We don't know what we're going to do, we don't know why we're going to do it, and we don't know what the result's going to be. We can't guarantee anything. He is always interested in architecture as a force of change and is moving away from the purely intellectual and rational to investigate realms that are unknowable, what he calls the uncanny. Underneath here, mm -hmm. through the building is fantastic. I think that's really, we want to make sure that the structure doesn't interrupt that. Yeah. Since the 1980s, he has looked to the French philosopher Derrida and to post-structuralist notions about meaning. It's, it's absolutely autonomous. Absolutely. Jacques Derrida, a founder of an approach to literary interpretation known as deconstruction, has taken a strong interest in architecture. For him, buildings like literature need not be interpreted according to a single holistic idea, but can be analyzed by breaking them down, deconstructing them into independent meanings. I often say that deconstruction is not simply a theory, and it's not simply a set of discursive rules or a way of reading books. It is, it is, of course, to some extent, but not, not only this. Now, deconstruction has to do with institutions, society, politics, uh, hard structures, and so on. So, in that, to that extent, the, the kind of architecture, of uh, an architecture, uh, Peter Eisenman or Jimmy are practicing, uh, is more, I would say, affirmative and, and uh, explicitly deconstructive than deconstruction as a literary or philosophical uh, practice. Deconstruction, either in, in, let's say, philosophy or in architecture, doesn't mean destruction. Uh, it's not negative. I always insist on the fact that deconstruction is an affirmative movement. It's not negative. Uh, it means, let's say, the undoing of the axioms or presuppositions on which a discourse or uh, an architectural building is built. Traditional architecture was depending on uh, levels of meaning which were not in themselves architectural. For instance, that the architecture would, should be useful, functional, or depending on religion, the temple as the, the place where the god would come or would be met, or political. Uh, monuments are the memory of the city and so on. So what we have to do, or what the, those architects or our architects have to do, is to free architecture for, from what is not architectural in itself. Not in order to reconstitute a, an architectural purity, architecture as purely architectural. But on the contrary, once architecture is freed from those presuppositions, it, it can engage in a new relationship to other arts. Another architect deeply interested in the work of Derrida is Bernard Chumi.